Okay, so we're live. Welcome back to the Magic Minds podcast. I'm Matt Bork, and you're listening and watching the Liberty's number one podcast. We are the best podcast in Dublin. Eh? Yup, the Liberty's, yup, the flats. How are we all keeping? Are you minding your little self? We have a brilliant show for you today. It's with a young man called Dara Bourne. Dara Bourne is the founder of Conscious King Coaching. He's just deadly. He's just deadly. I've got to introduce him to a friend of mine, Owen Kelly. He says, you've got to check out this dude. He's on a similar path to you. So I had a look at his videos. I loved the work that he was doing. But like lots of interviews, I didn't realize how good it would be till I sat down and had a chat with him. Now, we've got a few uh, friends in common. But sitting down and listening to this story, you know, he's he's from the inner city, he's from the flats, he's had a tough background, you know, childhood trauma, his mom coming to Ireland in the 50s, she being a black woman, you can imagine the, the impact that was on that woman, the difficulty that he, he would have had through that, his family, his brothers, his sisters, you know, we talk about fear, anxiety, spirituality, overcoming it, becoming successful and he's living in Australia, you know, getting out of party life, we talk talked about suicide suicide attempts thoughts on suicide oh, it was just so much in this interview I was blown away I could have talked to him for hours you know and um, yeah, obviously he's turned his life around he, you know he's a successful coach now he's making a lot of money he's making a lot of success and but that's not what he's about I could smell that up yeah this is pain in his way but that's not what it's all about. He just wants to give back. He wants to inspire people. He wants people to change their lives. And he just wants to support and engage with people to help them do that. And I just found him an absolute gem of a lad. Typical inner city. Lovely guy. Really caring. Great bit of crack. Great bit of banter. I loved it. I loved it. We done it at uh, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock my time. I think it was four o'clock his time over there, but I was buzzing. Like I am a morning person, but I was absolutely buzzing by the interview. Just mainly we started talking, we just started having a crack. It's a cracker. I hope you will enjoy it as much as I do. But sure, look, let us know. Listen to it. Let us know what you think. Love to hear your feedback about it. As always, I want to thank Noel Royley from Rooney Media Graphics, Andy from Liberty's Media Hub, Shannon's Hope Line. To you, the listeners, you, the watchers, thanks very much for your support. The support that we get on social media is just phenomenal. It's absolutely brilliant. Keep it coming. Get in, involved. Get in touch with us. If there's anybody that you would like us to interview, we'd love to hear from you. We're always interested in people from our community or people from any kind of community. Anyone that will create inspiration, love, kindness, compassion. We don't care what it is. We're, we're open. I will, I will, we've 87 shows. I'll interview anybody. You know, I, I've stopped uh, sticking down questions and planning the interviews. Now I'm just going to free will. And I'm absolutely loving that. So if you have anyone you'd like me to interview that you think is an inspiration, let us know. Head over to our YouTube page. Give us some reviews. Subscribe. Head over to iTunes. Give us your reviews over there. Share with family and friends. Spread the love. That's all we want to do. We want to create a, crip, a, a ripple through love and kindness. Wow, I'm getting a bit tongue-tied today. Uh, so look, enjoy the interview. Let us know what you think. And as always, 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 mind your little self. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, so we're live. Welcome back to the Magic Minds podcast. I'm Matt Book. On the show today, I'm joined by Dara Bourne, coaches, uh, conscious king. <laughs> <laughs> that was on here, found out conscious king coaching. I oh, fucking right. love it. <laughs> Thank you. So it's an honor to be on your podcast. I've checked out a couple of them before. So thank you for taking the time and getting up early before I work to make it happen. Look, I might be ginger and a rooster by aesthetics, but I'm a ginger and a rooster by nature. Cock a doodle doo. <laughs> Seven o'clock here in Ireland. Get up the yard, up the flats. Up the flats, up the flats. Yeah, we're good. It's four o'clock here in Sydney, Australia. And uh, yeah, I've just been tipping away, reaching out to a couple more clients at the moment. Um, I'm coaching within a program that I previously done myself. And I am currently coaching four women in that program on top of my own one-on-one -on -one clients as well. So it's um, it's really interesting and really empowering and uh, very gratifying w work, if that's what you want to call it. I don't, I don't believe it's work for me anyway. Yeah, 
That's deadly. Guys, I've asked Dara to come on the show because we're friends of friends. Uh, a mate of my own said to me, you got to get this lad, Dara, on your podcast. He's a mate of mine. Uh, and I says, yeah, let me check him out. I hadn't heard about you and absolutely loved it because I loved that the fact that you're from the flat, you're from the inner city. So we, I said to myself, we'll definitely be connected. So, and the fact that you, you know, you're all about consciousness. So I said, you know, I got to get this dude on the show. I love that whole journey. You were in Ireland, you went to Australia, and I want to know about that. So, look, what what brought you to Australia? Give us a little background to that part. I'll, I'll start first by uh, letting everyone know about the synchronicities and the three times I heard about you before we actually connected. Deadly, <laughs> deadly. Let's go. Uh, a, guy, a guy from the Liberties reached out. Um, I won't say his name. He was struggling. He was commenting on all my stuff. So I gave him a bit of time. And in that call, he uh, said he was going to be speaking to you the next day. Never heard it before. So I was like, good luck with that. Blah, blah. On a podcast with a guy in America, a fuck, an Indian guy in uh, Massachusetts in America. And he hit me up. Are you from the Liberty? So it's like, what? Yep, How the fuck do you know about the liberties? <laughs> and then on. So that was the third time I was like, fucking hell, I better reach out and say hello to Matt. And here we are. The conversation has been great since. And it goes even deeper because your ma is pals with a friend of mine called Debbie Collins. And Debbie they're mates. Collins. Of... So, yeah, yeah, we're only six degrees from separation. A hundred percent, yeah, and I done the breath work as well uh, uh, last year. Yeah, I wanted to make a video about that. It's taken me till this year to do that. But yeah, you only done that recently as well, didn't you? I did, I did. I absolutely love holotropic. I love that uh, altered state of consciousness because I've done a lot of work there uh, at an intellectual level. You know, with a reading college council, but the holotropic brings you into that altered state. It brings you deeper than your your intellect will allow you. It's, it's yeah, it's uh, therapy on crack, as I call it. it bring, <laughs> <laughs> it's deep sea diving. <laughs> <laughs> it brings it past the ego anyways. And uh, I just highlight the importance of that. Yeah. Somewhat like a lot of uh, counselling work and sometimes we don't get, we don't penetrate that deeper level or that higher level of consciousness, as we say. Uh, and it's important, like, when when we bring up these conversations around the flats, for instance, you're like, what the fuck? What are you on about? Holly are you back at the Oaks? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? And, and it's yeah. so, uh, I find it so funny because this type of work is looked down on around in you know, around the flats and working class, people don't understand it. And they slag it off as being hippie and all sorts of weird and crazy shit. Yet, this type of work is actually, more, some might say, more powerful than counselling or other things along that line. Because you're penetrating straight directly to the pain point, as opposed to coming at it with your brain and your ego and mind and you're covering and hiding behind the mask that your ego is built to protect you. I love that. That's deadly. I love the way you say that. And it is for me, it, 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 it shielded the intellect. I know I love intellect. I love learning. I love understanding and logical thinking, blah, blah, blah. But this brought me beyond it. Now, obviously, I believe that the universe will bring you when you're ready. And I believe that was my path. I had to do that point. And it supported that, and I, I jump between counselling and, and holotropic, and they they uh, they collaborate well together. But it's really mm. penetrating that pain point, as you say. It's releasing that point of soreness that's deep in our, our psyche, isn't it? Yeah, it's a hundred percent. And for uh, like a lot of the times, even going to counselling, a lot of the times for people, sometimes we don't actually know what is internally downloaded to our system mm -hmm. um, and a great a great highlight i will bring to that is have you ever had a f an argument with your partner or one of your mates or somebody usually it's with the partners because you're mirroring mm -hmm. off it's a, when you're most uh when you're in each other's company the most you find each other's trigger points easier mm -hmm. um it's just a mirror 
of what's going on in your internal world. Anyways, have you ever had an argument and crack, you, you, you lose your mind, you go f like not to 100 in less than a second, full rage, fuck this, fuck that, whatever the argument happens. And then five or 10 minutes later, you calm down, you're like, what, what just happened? What just happened? And that shows, that's the, so that's the inner child controlling the adult. And what has happened is the trigger point has been pushed and the adult has been taken for a joyride. So a past pain point um, has been triggered and has came out to play without you fully understanding what's going on. And even after that, we don't actually realize what that pain point was until we take our healing journey onto those levels, penetrating the deeper level of consciousness. We're going deep and it's only seven o'clock. I love it. I love it. <laughs> take me back. Why did you why did you go to Australia? What was the what was the course of action there? What was that all about? Um just my mates. A, a bunch of my mates are over here and they they went to Perth two thousand and eight, that was twelve years ago. Coming up to Tordain. Um and I just they were they were here for like three or four months and I was going out with a girl at the time that was a bit getting really messy at the end, you know. So I just thought, you know what? Now is the perfect time. Um, I'll never get this opportunity again. And while they're already there, I can land on my feet and they know what the place is about and all that. So I just took a chance and to be honest, I only came here on a holiday. I didn't have any big grand master plan. I had a few bits in my suitcase and laden. Not a lot, not a lot of financials behind me either. And I came on holiday and I've been here ever since. <laughs> on holidays the, as well ever <laughs> since. <laughs> the, the, uh, the universe had a plan for you, my brother. A hundred percent. And coming over here has, uh, has really helped me find who I am really helped me find who I am because you can't just drop around to your mars and if you're not getting the rent in for that week I, like there's been a bit of mischief involved of course <laughs> no, no, doubt that's, no doubt that's the case well, come here <laughs> to me right you, you you're on a journey you're, you're you're exploring spirituality consciousness and a higher state of of being and you you seem to be a million miles away from where you were before, the flats and that, that that culture. Give us a little insight to what life was like for you growing up uh, or, or, or the person you were or that you're moving away from. Do you mind doing that? Yeah, no, not at all. Uh, growing up in the flats, playing, going around, hanging around the flats, robbing things, fucking messing on the stairs, taking all sorts of stuff, going out all weekend, coming back, going out Friday, coming back Monday, fucking missing work. <laughs> the whole... Yeah. Down the early house, the chancery. Yeah, down the chancery, the white, yep, the, the white horse. Yup, the chancery. the blue now out on the Liffey. You know I met? We hung around there. We had a bit of a routine. Me too. I brought my mate. I brought my mate onto the building site with me one Saturday morning. I was supposed to finish this job uh, by Monday. It's plumbing. A Mespel, uh, Mespel apartments up next to the Mespel Hotel, uh, just off Bagger Street, and. Me and my mate went into spirit and I fucking brought him to work the next day full of bumbles. We <laughs> 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 had a little sight radio in the in one of the apartments and the foreman who was still my mate, he's like, What the fuck he what who's he? <laughs> the bottle of vodka and a little sight radio and he just said, Sam, fuck sake, Chuck, and he locked us in one of the apartments. <laughs> yeah, to hand over like to hand over two on suites and a main bathroom by Monday, and we're in there off the chops dancing uh, on Saturday morning. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> <can> love it. <laughs> so, uh, them yeah, were the days. Them, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> they got me into a bit of trouble, but uh, they made. Gave me the wisdom, and it's taken me a long time to get to where I'm at now. Um, even up until last year, like I was not as bad, but you know yourself, you're having a few 
and then you're not going to bed at five or six in the morning, you know. Yeah. Uh, what, was the what, was, what was the turning point? Or what you know? I know it's not like a, a, a quick turnaround. It's like turning a ship in a dock. It's eventually, eventually torn, torn, torn. What, what, what were the, what were the, 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 the forces that 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 created that turn? Was that point in you said, you know what? Here, let's make a change here. Yeah, well, there was one point there. Uh, for, like there's a multiple like multitude of points but the one point uh what i said a few minutes ago about the trigger point i had a trigger point with my partner in the nightclub here in sydney and um, yeah. i thought a bloke tried to kiss her now i always had this trigger and this nervous anxiety and and not nervous anxiety you know that paro fucking watching to see what's going on around the place and Fair and it was horse oh, shit, but what happened that night? I thought the bloke kissed her and I went I was literally talking to my friend's wife here, talking about marrying Sasha, having kids, all of the the roller coaster that is our relationship. And yeah. like I mean, when I seen this I saw red and I went to kill your man. And I went to I legged it out of the place before I done any damage and then I was gone mad. But the next morning we had a big conversation and it was like, I know that I trust you. I, I don't I don't understand why my body doesn't. It's like my body is telling me. So through going to a spiritual healer, I was able to uh, bring that back to past trauma within my childhood. So once I delved into that, um, and previous to that, I had thoughts of suicide. After a big, huge bender and a big session over in uh, Melbourne, I used to live there. A few things, a culmination of things came together. And um, yeah, I was I was surrounded by people, but I felt alone. And I was on a session for fucking, for uh, nearly a week on and off, you know, over the Christmas time. Oh, of course, of course, So um, in that, I had this thought, uh, you know, I was talking to my ma, she was doing great. Um, the whole family are doing great. Everything's great over Christmas. Then uh, talking to my partner at the time, everything's great because she was in the boy at the time, the whole family. And then my mate left and, and moved to Perth. So, you know, I was on the session. I just felt trapped. I never leaving the gaff. And I, I this talk came up after I hung up the phone on somebody. Not hung up, just the end of the conversation. Jesus, they're all doing great. They wouldn't even miss me if I was gone. Oh. Yeah. So uh, I was like, straight away, I was like, what? Do you know, what, ha what? Like, what? where did that come from? And the snowball then is like, the more I tried not to think about that, the more I thought about it. And, and the day by the fucking vortex went. So that was a pivotal moment in my life as well. So... Um, I reached out a buddy of mine that is, lives in Toronto in Canada who told me about the book The Secret a couple of years previously. So mm -hmm. I got that, and that kicked off my spiritual journey. Yeah. And then the second one that I said first about Saoirse, that uh, pushed me into, well, helped me, guided me into uh, spiritual healers. And then from there, I went and done this workshop that I am now facilitating and coaching within with my mentor so i've been training with my mentor for the last four years on and off and That's now class. now i work with him yes to bring bring my level of consciousness and awareness uh, to the world to help others as as you know we're from the flats we men's men as we all see we're all hard men we like to drink and that's where our emotion goes into the end of a point. Uh, after that course, uh, that was like in 2017, uh, I started making these videos on my Instagram story, like what you're doing now. Yeah, I love so I've been doing I've been doing this a f like a few years now, and I just felt like I, I understand things that people, some other people don't. And mm. the cross that, I'm from the flats. You're from, where are you, the flats? Yeah, I live in me place, that's Dublin Eight. There you go. So for, for us to bring what we're speaking about into the flats and translate it, translate it into the way we speak, 
crossing spirituality with like what would you call an inner city dialect yeah, for yeah, me yeah. it's like I owe it to my people and myself yeah. to share this because we suffer. We that's suffer. Me too. That's me too. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, that is my thought process too. I want to break down those barriers. Mm, mm. Can I just can, can I just touch yeah. on something in case I forget? I want to go back. First of all, thanks very much for sharing your vulnerability about the, your mental health, your suicidal ideations. You touched on something that's really important there. You said you had this anxious don't know what's going on. I can really connect with that because I was going out with a girl a while ago and she said to me when we're walking out of flats, what's up with you? You seem etchy. And I'm like, no, I'm grand. But she seemed a little bit untense and I was like, no. And I realised what it was and it's like what you say that you're always watching for danger. You're like, what's mm. going on? What's going on? What is that? And what, Can you connect with that? Is that something that you can resonate with? Yeah, well, for me, that was like, uh, it was trauma that I, I experienced in my childhood. So, for me, it was, it only dawned on me when, when I started doing the work. So it was just something that happened just over time. But yeah. then always being from the flats, you're always, you know, you're, you're, you're on high alert. And yeah, it's just watching, the way you're, where you're up, you're watching, you're going out to nightclubs and everybody's on the sniff and all of that carry on, including me, including <laughs> me. So, yeah, not to, not to be on a pedestal. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just that that always being sharp with my surroundings yeah. in case anything was ever to happen. So now, now I live from my heart. That's your mind and your ego that thinks you know it all, you know there's something wrong. Unless I feel something in my body and in my heart, then I'll be ready for anything that happens. But I don't go looking for it like I'm the fucking... <laughs> the Dalai Lama or some SAS hero. <laughs> <laughs> okay, brilliant. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like a sixth sense from being around the flats, isn't it? It's like yeah. something you grow up with and it sort of just comes with where we live and how we were brought up. But it brings us back to the point that you said earlier, Darren, we were talking about it's that pain point within us where we're, we're, we're reacting and, and watching based on a hort that's in there that we aren't even really familiar. We probably know at, a, at, a, at an intellectual level does something there, but from a mm -hmm. subconscious point of view, we're watching, we're, we're, we're protecting, aren't we? And that plays out as anxiety, then it, it, it snowballs into that incident you were saying in the nightclub with your, with your, with your partner or your wife. Mm. And, that's, and that's how it it comes out of us, isn't it? We're triggered easily. Yeah, we don't even sure. know about it. Mm. And that's that's also one of the thing when you have family and you have kids and um, to acknowledge and be aware of those triggers because we don't. For me now, this is the gen. My generation for me is where I break that chain, um, because it's ancestral trauma as well. Because what my mom went through in her life. And what our family went through, and then previous to that, what her, her family and her parents went through, um, growing up, like there's a lot of trauma that's attached all the way, and mm. for people that like, we all drink, we all go out the pub and get on the session and do stupid things, and we do stupid things that are past on to our siblings or our kids and 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 now that i recognize how how these traumas are passed down i'm making a stand to break the chain so i don't pa pass them down to my kids brilliant uh, gabber mate talks a lot about that you know i'm a big fan of gabber mate and he talks about generational pain you know and it's it's brilliant from well it was brilliant for me Dara to recognise the pain that I was given by my generation of parents and grandparents. It stops the blame. It cuts it mm -hmm. off. It goes, you know what, they didn't know any better. If they knew better, they'd do better. Moya Angelo. And then, you know, it, it yeah. gives me freedom then if I have passed on pain to my kids or whatever. I say, you know, I didn't know any better, but I fucking do now. Uh, yes. You know, and consciously going forward, I'm going to stop that. And that's, I'm delighted you said that. And that's so inspiring and powerful for for, for young men and women to hear. It's not their fault and it's not their parents' fault. 
and that, it's not oh, it's a million million trillion percent it's like you don't you're not born with all the wisdom of the world straight away you know it's it's true trial and error and our mistakes that we gather this wisdom as we go along that's why it's called wisdom um and for me like my mom went had some horrific traumas in her childhood and like she came to Ireland. She was uh, she was born in Liverpool, and then she was living in Finglas. That's where her man was from. Yeah. And first black woman in Ireland. Out, well, I don't know if she was the first, but in fifty, I think it's fifty six. You could. She's probably there's a high yeah. chance that she is. Anyways, she's born. Uh, she's black outside of wedlock. The Catholic Church. The nuns, all of that carry on, and then growing up in Finglas and town and the whole lot. You can imagine there's a uh, there's a lot of stigma around that and a lot of um, there's a lot of fights, not just from yeah. my mom, but throughout our life. Of course, of course, stuff. constant battle. Uh, yeah, con- and that's that's without being black. So it's, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a bit it's a bit more magnified when when you have a bit of a skin color. So, um. And that's just it. So the mechanism, the defense mechanisms, and then the escapism that we use through alcohol and drugs and stuff like that to suppress these emotions and traumas that we have uh, experienced and suffered in our life. Um, all that is, is it's trapped in and it's now a trigger point for whenever you're pushed, where your button is pushed in the right point, it's like a volcano ready to erupt. So. This is the game I play now to help my clients to uh, to uncover the pain points and show show them that they're there and give them the tools and the mechanism to release that and then the tools they can navigate life now on a conscious level moving forward. I was I, listening to you just talking there, Darren. Listening to your man's story, I was washed with with how do I say this? So it's just, I was washed with emotion, but I was also washed with Jesus Christ. Do you realize how powerful of a soul, and I don't mean to, I'm not trying to feed your ego or blow smoke up your hole. Do you realize how powerful of a human being and a soul you are to rise above the hardship that you've come from to now talk about love, kindness, compassion, consciousness? Do you, does that resonate with you? Fuck oh. how this, I am, I am deadly. This is deadly. I'm not, you know, Wow, what have I done here? Do you do you, do you, do you yeah. understand the magnitude of that? Yeah, hundred percent. And I'll also highlight and bring it back to my ma because it's the magnitude exactly. of how she reared us as well. Even though she's suffering from these pains and this trauma, and without actually knowing, and, and it's also the importance of the work. It's like the the drama triangle. Are you going to be a victim to your uh, what happened because what happened we cannot change that's a that's a given all we can do is heal heal what damage it's done and then choose differently moving forward and if we don't heal the damage that's done we'll continue to play that pattern over and over again and some some people like some people go through life without actually realizing that there's a pattern and abusive relationships uh, you know, the father figure being abusive to the mother figure, and that's a trauma. Like, and even even that, I'll highlight the importance of releasing trauma. Like, not all trauma is like sexual abuse or physical abuse. Like, some trauma could be a kid in the play, playground, me or you, anybody, and you're always picked last for the team. You're always picked last, and you're like, why are they picking me last, you know? So for a 10-year-old kid, that's like, I'm not good enough. So you're downloading the program that you're not good enough, that you carry on, and you may, you may become an introvert later in life. So you're, you're afraid of social, uh, what's it called? Fuck. Social gatherings, you know, you're not a big public speaker in, in a circle or, you know, so... It's not all all always horrific trauma, That's but it's brilliant. what that little boy brilliant. makes up, a boy or girl. It's relative to the person, and you just brought back a memory for me. I got I used to get picked last for football because I was brutal. I was a little fat <laughs> kid. 
blah, blah, blah. And that washed me with, with memories of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I can resonate with that. But I've done, you know, open disclosure training in the hospital, blah, blah, blah. Trauma is trauma. Pain is mm. pain, you know. Uh, a difficult situation is a difficult situation to the person. It's relative, isn't it? People think it's sexual abuse. It's, it's hurt. It's pain. It's blah, blah. It's wherever it is for you. That's the trauma. Mm. And we can all experience, as you say, it's downloaded into our brain. And that's a hundred percent. That's the trauma. And also we, we can't experience anybody's trauma. We can't belittle it. So if it's you that was picked last on the team all the time, um, then you play out that program that you're not good enough. And what I will highlight here is like a huge, like trauma is downloaded on a cellular level. It's downloaded into our DNA. Um, and how children, if you look at children, the pure and innocence of them, how they process trauma in real time um, is, let's say, I, I, me and you were on the swings and I kicked you off the swing and I like, you run over crying to your man and like, fuck, screaming, like, fuck him, I fucking hate him, blah, blah, blah. You're going mad because I kicked you off the swing. But in that screaming and that release of energy and emotion, you're releasing that trauma from the body. So five minutes later, me and you are best mates again, and you're on the swing and I'm pushing you, do you know? And um, it's when we get older that we hold grudges because we've now downloaded an ego, an ego from society's way of being. And let's say me and you have an argument later in life, we're like, nah, fuck that cunt. <coughs> He's not coming over to say sorry to me. I'm not going to say sorry to him, you know. So we carry on not talking to each other for for years, for years. But instead of having a conscious conversation around whatever that subject is and helping release that from the body and the energy field so we can live in harmony together moving forward. Um, and that's really important for today to, to highlight that with people because... There's a quote that I love. I, I watch in the film. It's called The Green Book. Have you heard of it? No, never heard of it. It's uh, this black musician in the US, uh, a white racist guy who was a security guard, was charged with bringing him around the country. But the black guy was like, he was a genius, uh, I think. One of them instruments, not just your average instrument, you know. Oh, I think I've seen this. I think I've seen it, but go on. I don't remember it. Um, and the piano, but the white fella had a brother that he didn't f fell out with, didn't talk to, and didn't want to reach out to. And uh, the black guy goes, the musician, he said, The world is full of lonely people afraid to make the force move. Wow, 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 I, wow, I thought, wow. I thought that was profound. Like, how many people do we now hold grudges against each other? Um, and, and later regret it in later life. Do you know what? The, what that's, that's fantastic. I love it. And one of the most freeing things for me, I've dissolved a lot of the resentments. I've dissolved a lot of the... I've, there's, there's no one I can think of in my life, even the people that hurt me really deeply, I have anger for anymore because I forgive myself and I've, I've, mm. I've, bridged, I've bridged those gaps. I mean, do you know what? I can't carry pain and hurt anymore because I had this internal loneliness because I shielded myself away from the world because of my ego and exactly all that stuff you said that's an absolutely powerful piece of uh, uh wisdom you have to share with us thanks very much and that's that's also the thing as, as well isn't it and uh, thanks for highlighting that because uh holding on to hatred for another person is like drinking poison and expecting them to die it doesn't work like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. Oh, holding on to the rope. The longer you hold on to the rope, the more it hurts your hands, it burns your hands, and then you fall. So, so as a metaphor for life, the longer you hold on to that, the more pain you're building up in the volcano. Before somebody presses that fucking button, you're gonna erupt and explode and do. You know, it could be a fight, it could be an argument, or it could be. Uh, you know whatever way you were up in that moment. Yeah. And and also highlight forgiveness. Like a lot of 
a lot of people that come into my field and a lot of people that I grew up with and notice uh, think forgiveness is letting the other person off the hook. <laughs> and it's it's like it's actually the complete opposite. Forgiving somebody like that's well, forgiving somebody is letting yourself off the hook. You're allowing your body to process that traumatic um, traumatic uh, experience that's downloaded in your system. Just because you're uh, just because you're forgiving them doesn't mean that it's for them. Forgiving somebody that done you wrong is releasing their traumatic energy from your field, so you can live clearer and move forward. Um, yeah. I, I, how I start forgiving is when I turned in and start forgiving myself. I'm in the middle of building a program at the moment called Mind Your Little Self. And one of the weeks in it is on forgiveness, right? But for me, I went back and I looked at relationships, I had jobs, the people I robbed, blah, blah, blah. And I went back and I said to myself, I forgive you. You know, you didn't know any better. And I, I honestly forgive myself. And I let that go. So I just found forgiving other people easier. I could then understand, wow, they probably didn't consciously know what they were doing at the time. And I seen it from their perspective. But I think it's an inside job, isn't it, Dara? When you start forgiving yourself for like fucking saying this to someone, telling someone to fuck off, calling them a cunt or whatever. Yeah, a hundred. It's a hundred percent because it's a reflection. Uh, there's a word or there's a quote. Um, your perception of me is a reflection of you. Mm -hmm. So if I come giving you all that verbal abuse, what's what what that really tells me is uh, you're internally unsure of yourself. You've got no confidence, or you know. So whatever you spit out there to the world is a reflection of your internal world, and that's yeah. also and like bring it back as well because in not like. We don't know what we don't know. And it's that simple. We don't know what we don't know. And we bring it back to how we were reared, our childhood, who we grew up with, whatever we done when we were younger. We didn't know what we know now. So we can only make peace with who we were in that moment and forgive ourselves for causing that destruction, that pain, or whatever it was in that moment. And then it's from that moment forward we get to choose differently because we're choosing ourselves first. Like, a great analogy for this is I, I can't love you more than I love myself. So if I'm telling you or my partner or anybody, I fucking love you to bits, this, that, and the other. Unless I love me, that's hot air, and I might as well be coming out of my arse. And it's simple as that. Um, and and people people recognise that as well. Like, you know, people can only do for you what you do for yourself. That's a whopper state. Absolutely. I, I, I can so connect with that, you know. I feel I can love and mind and care for my family more now because... Mm. I really, truly mind myself and care about it. I know what it's like to mind myself, saying no, uh, opting out of things just to protect myself. I've turned in and know how to do it. Now I feel confident I can mind from my heart, not from my intellect. That's a great point. Yeah, 100%. And uh, two things I want to I wanna highlight is uh, look after you. Mind yourself. I heard you say that. Mind your little self. <laughs> mind your little self. Fucking hilarious. Uh, or what was I just going to say? Say that again. Mind your little self. I say no, it all before the time. that, before that. Oh, about my heart turning in a mind and from yeah, my heart. Yeah, you know, you know. Right, so another, another thing is when we set boundaries for ourselves, um, when people feel the power of our no, to truly understand the magnitude of our yes. And oh. how, where that's coming from is when we say yes to all of these people to go on the, the walk down Graben Street or to the shops or to the park or whatever, what you're doing in that moment is you're saying no to yourself. So if you have 
this podcast that you want to make today, but you said yes to somebody else for going on a run, but this is really what you wanted to do. What you're doing is you're belittling yourself and your own self-worth in that moment. And the more we do that and spread ourselves thin, like your mate that wants you to go for the point, and they're like, no, I'm off to drink this weekend. And you just go, and then you end up having 10 points and being done the next day. I fucking thought, I said I wasn't going to go for a point. So what you're doing then, you're belittling yourself, and little by little you're chipping away at your own confidence, and that builds self-doubt. Uh, anxiety, resentment for yourself. So the strength of our no is also the power of our yes. That's for absolutely choosing ourselves first. I love it. Absolutely love it. And here's one for you then. How, what has, how and why, no, that's not the way I'm going to ask this question. Your, what was the reaction from your past, your friends, your, 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 people used to run with to, <laughs> to your life now how have you handled for anyone that's watching this you're a phenomenal strong human being but you know you have had to make some tough choices what has that been like for you so people can be inspired if there's a young man or woman wants to follow a path like yours that wants to step out from the herd wants to break the norm in society what was that Two like for you and how did you do it uh for me, I was doing all of this work. I was helping all of these people, and I was behind my little mask, uh, in my little circle. I had this Facebook group where I was doing the work with, you know, the, the spiritual community and, and my mentors, and I was doing live videos, but there was like 50 people in it. Nobody that truly knew me, um, and I was doing that for a bit. So nearly, nearly a year, I had all of his fucking wisdom, this way of being, how to connect the dots and how to help people come out of their mind and live from their heart. And the only, my, my partner, nobody was on this, man. I wouldn't even let them in. And that tormented me for, for nearly a year. And then I was like, the people, my, my friends at home in Ireland, like they, this is the whole reason and this is why I want to deliver this message to them. Um, and I couldn't bring myself to do it. I was afraid. I was afraid of what people would think. I grew up around the flats and we were robbing and smoking, smoking joints on the stairs and doing all of the things. And then, like, you know, yourselves, a few rough people around the flats, a few gangsters floating around. Um, would they think I'm weak and would I think I'm a faggot? And, but in that moment, they control you. So in that moment, I was a prisoner to my own mind and my own ego. And the penny dropped. The penny dropped. I was out in Dunleary. I was at home on holiday. I was out in Dunleary. And I was like... That's where I am now. Yep, that's Dunleary. That's where I am now. I'm in work. That's where my missus is from. Ah, gas. Oh, that's where I'm in work yeah. now. I work in the National Rehab in Dunleary. Ah, lovely, lovely. I love it. And, and what happened? The penny dropped. It's like, this is not about you. This is not about you. Get out of your fucking own way. Get out of your ego's way and just spit it all and put it all on the line. This is not about you. And, and I've lived by that mantra ever since. This is not about me. The moment I make this about me is the moment my ego wins. This is, I understand the message that's far greater and far more powerful than me and I allow source and the wisdom of the universe to come through me and by doing that if I look like a fool or some people think I'm a dickhead or some people that doesn't matter that's none of my business how they see me what matters for the way of life the way of being and myself and my heart is that it helps people to heal their internal world, gives them ideas how to release their trauma and gives them ideas of how to show up in their family's life and their own future moving forward to show that there is a different way. Far too many of my friends, my friends, family and all sorts of people that have committed suicide in my lifetime and still, and it's really, really, my mom attempted suicide last year, which was really devastating for us as a family and for me. And for me to step out and speak that truth 
this is not about me. This is about the ripple that this creates and people's families moving forward. So that day was really profound and it was a huge pivotal moment in my life because nothing but love and respect that I get from that first video that I'd done in Ireland. Everybody in Ireland, the messages came in. Owen Kelly was one of them. He played and fucking fair play to you, pal. It's somebody that's speaking truth and being authentic, you know, because the whole, it's the generation of the influencer and all this, isn't it? Mm. Um, uh, I just want to make a point you said there about Owen. Owen has jumped on a few videos. Me, his wife, Jill, they've been really kind to me, really saying we come from, you know, the Liberties, the inner city. So for someone like that to, to really connect, say, do you know what, my fair play to you, are doing a good job. It's really powerful, you know, and it really inspired me. It's the like of him, it's the like of his missus that share my work, share my story, and say kind things about me. And we need more people like that. We need more people like me, you, them, together. There's a great sense of community, and I love it. I just want to, and I can't thank him enough. He's a good, good egg. Yeah, Owen is a legend. Of, I used to play football. I used to hang around all of a bond and fucking... You up the bond. Street. You up the bond. I, <laughs> I got back to my mouth. I got on the hub to my mates. <laughs> uh, <laughs> To my mates, <laughs> to my mates, horse yard. Do you remember what was it? What was the bridge? Is the bridge was three? The back yeah. of the flats. There used to be a horse yard there, and then yeah. mate got it. Where are you? What flats are you? I'm in me place. Like you're talking about Gary, Gary, oh, uh, oh, Gary. Yeah. yeah, he's has a, a funeral at home now. Um, yeah, yeah, doing really yeah, well. So. Good. Nice kid, dead sound. Yeah, like. yeah, legend. But we went on the he, he he left the gate open in the yard, didn't he? And he's like, Come on, Snoop, come on with me, will you? I have to go down the horse to get out, blah, blah. So I ran out of school, went down anyways, the gate was open. So when we went, I jumped in the pad in the paddock with the horse. I was going around, I fell off the fucking thing, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean Harsh show you all down my face, down me blit, the whole uniform, the whole lot. Because I went on the hop, I couldn't go home, could I? So I had to wait until after school to go home. And me and, me and Garrett walked up and my ma was like, how was school, son? It's like, yeah, it was grand, it was grand. Start right, is it? <laughs> Mr. McGarry's out there ringing me. I went in the hop, you cunt, and laid the sweet <laughs> brush. <laughs> you went to Bolali then, did you? Bolali, yeah, yeah. She uh, played uh, back. Few slaps of that I got, and then Gareth, she chased Gareth down the stairs with the sweet brush as well. So, oh, the he thought, you don't come up to this house again. <laughs> and then, <laughs> That's why did, he, why did he call you Snoop? Ah, just a bit of stick that stuck. Oh, um, okay. the, and I used to hang around the flats, and uh, Liam, one of the, the older youngblers in the flats, he... Uh, can you remember 2001, the, doc, the Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, yeah. Snoop Dogg. Because yeah, that's so. what Owen said to me. Give me my Snoop a ring. And I was like, how the fuck is Snoop? A black? And then I went, because oh, I know you from a distance. I've seen you around, you know. you I've seen you in Yorkshire or whatever. I've seen you around over the years, but I didn't know. And I've probably seen you in Spirit a few times or in the chance we... But I didn't, <laughs> I didn't yeah, know you yeah, all, yeah. That, all that well. Come here. I want to ask you a question, though. What would you say to, 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 because I'm sure there's loads of little Darris running around the flats, York Street, Bishop Street, whatever. What would you say to them now? Uh, what what words of wisdom would you say to them? You know, would you share with them? My biggest bit of wisdom would be: don't be afraid to open your mouth. Don't be afraid. The voice that's speaking in your head is not true and it's not really you. And it's a good differentiation with the with the, the ego and the self. If 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 the ego is talking, who's the one listening? If the oh. ego is talking, who is the one listening? So Eckhart Tolle talks about that, doesn't he? I love that's, Eckhart Tolle. That's my master, yeah, a new word. Yeah. Yeah, and, I love um, so I would just highlight that the ego is the one that loves dominance and control and beyond the ego is the self and that's who we truly are nobody's going to judge it 
And what's most important is the freedom that you feel after speaking the truth. And that's what's led me and you to this moment, this point in time in our journey. It's brilliant. So, uh, it's absolutely brilliant. You're yeah, such a just, par party wise young man. I love it. Here's a question for you. Tell us about the work that you do. What is the, the work that you're doing and what does it consist of when you work with people? Give people an insight to what you do uh, and what that looks like. Basically, we it's like a biohack. We we I speak and I probe. It's like it's a bit like counselling, but once I probe our pain points, um, by the energetics I can witness uh, on the screen or in person, I start to know a way to go with the conversation. So we bring it back to past traumatic experiences. A high percentage of the time that comes from the childhood. And we identify those pain points. I mirror back what's really going on and what program is running their life. And then we get to consciously choose if that's the program they want to live by moving forward. Brilliant. Um, in a nutshell. Uh, and then also, yeah. And then also, we, uh, I've, I've learned tools through my mentor and this work. And then, and then teach those tools so people can navigate the life themselves whenever these uh, trigger points come up. So a, less, a lot less uh, eruptive. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what, we ju what you just said, and my pal Debbie Collins and your pal, she talks with us all the time. It's breaking those patterns. Everything is patterns. Consciousness. Develop consciousness around your patterns. I only talked about this two weeks ago about uh, Persian Elton. You know, she talks about walking down the street and there's a hole in the ground, blah, blah. But once you stop falling into the hole and you make a conscious decision to go down the different road, you're breaking the mm. pattern, aren't you? And you're like the pattern breaker. You shine a light on and say, here, get up the fuck. No more going <laughs> in the hole. <laughs> and it, it, that's, that's effectively it. It was just mirror back where they're showing up or how they're showing up in life. And like, for instance, if, I, if you ring somebody and you go, uh, What's happening? We need to have it. We need to have a chat. Are you available at four o'clock? Instantly, that person thinks they've done something wrong, and that per, you know that that fear that takes takes control of our body. That just shows you that's a fear mechanism that's been downloaded through years of societal conditioning from and programming. And also, I will highlight a big, huge part of programming. Fuck, I'm all tangled. A big, huge part of programming is the media, uh, advertisements, the, the makeup, the fucking clothing brands and all of those industries that are built around your limiting belief and your belief that you're not good enough. Everything they're selling is, project, is, is downloading into your subconscious mind that you will not be good enough until you have this product. You will not be good enough until you have this makeup. And in essence, you're, put, like, you're literally putting on a mask and hiding behind that. So that past programming, it's a loving interruption. It's mirroring back the programs that people are living from and asking them consciously, is this what you want to live by moving forward? When that, when that program comes up, um, you get the, now that you're aware of it, you get to consciously choose different. That's deadly, deadly. And it's it, for you and me speaking like this, it seems so simplistic, right? But it's not, it's difficult when you're in the midst of a shit storm to see from, I'm, I'm actually in the process of building a meditation called Perspective, uh, a helicopter thing it's called, right? But it's just what you were saying. It's you're able to stand above for this person and go this, this, and this, and then you mirror back to him. It's brilliant simplicity, but brilliant and effective. I love it, Ari. It's hugely effective. And also as well, it's like now I'm, I'm, I'm mastering how to probe the question so people come to their own realization instead of giving the answer. Because um, it's easily to see, it's easy, sometimes it's easy to see the pattern from me. Yeah. But for them to understand that, like how many, how many of your mates have you given that voice and they fucking, oh, <laughs> <hell's> <laughs> <the star? laughs> 
<laughs> off out the door and like bang, they do the yeah. same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you might as well be pissing in the wind. Um, so I love, uh, I so, love what you said there. I love what you said there. You know, you want them to find the solutions, and that's how people adhere to it. And that's the sign of and the tr of a true leader and a true mentor is that you hold their hands so softly that by the time they reach the destiny, they think that they've got there themselves, and that's mm -hmm. how they gain ownership to it. But it's also in in or just reflect they have got there themselves. I'm just a mirror. I'm not. I'm not a god or a guru. What's his name? Tony Robbins has a doco. I am not your guru. I'm just a mirror and a guide to help them understand their shit. They get to choose differently moving forward. There was something that I I, I missed there. Uh, yeah, and it's also the same. You can only meet people uh, as uh, as as deep as you have gone yourself. So for me to sit up on a on a high a high horse and try and talk down to people, it, it's not the same effect as guiding them and empowering them. That brings me back. So my whole my whole thing is to empower people to live the life of their dreams and to consciously live from the from the place that they say they want to live. God. If I have a student in my eyes, if I have a student for 12 months, I don't see that as, hmm, what was the best way to say this? I don't want, we don't want to become somebody's drug. We don't want to become their addiction. So you're like, you're the left leg. Should you step out of the equation, they can't navigate this world by themselves. And that's, because all, all you're becoming in that moment is another drug or another whatever. The idea is to empower them to be able to walk and not only be able to walk, to run and then be a leader themselves, to create that ripple effect in leaders. Now more than ever, it's more important. It's a hugely pivotal time in history right now and it's important that all the leaders of the world stand up as soon as possible. Absolutely fantastic. Dara, we're coming near the end. I, I, I could possibly talk to you all day. I've never felt so connected to someone. It's fucking, you, it feels like we're in a mirror here. Uh, what's, <laughs> what's the one thing you'd like people to take away after listening to this interview? Be yourself. Nobody else can be you other than you. And if that means being a dickhead in somebody else's story, but owning your own truth and living from your own heart, then be that. Be yourself always. Love it. Absolutely love it. If people want to, to, to link in with you and they want to work with you, where can they find you? What's the best place to get you at? Let us know. Uh, Dara Beach, Conscious King Coaching on Instagram. Dara Bourne on Facebook. My website is getting built at the moment. Uh, that's daraborn.com. Um, that's almost, it's close to being finished. So whenever you hear this, it'll be around that. And then I will comment and link and share this uh, podcast when it comes out. And yeah. Oh, you might find me on the stairs down in York Street. <laughs> <laughs> you up the snoop. <laughs> you up the flat. You up the flat. Can you perform? Darren, look, I, I, I'm not going to blow smoke up your heart. You're a fucking, you're a phenomenal human being. I love your bravery. I love your story. You're, you're such an inspirational young man. Uh, it's deadly that you're from the flats. You're as wise as an owl. I know it's just, but you have to. You have to go through that poison to make you a potion, don't you? And you're you're, you're living it. You're, I love you're, that. Wow. You know, don't start robbing that now, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's going up in my story now as soon as we hang up. <laughs> yeah, like, you I mean, you epitomize using your poison as your potion. You're now, you know, you're being an inspiration. There's somebody that went through racial abuse, tough times in the flats, your ma still struggling and you're still torn into love you know Rumi talks about this like if you mm. can find love through trauma you know you're you're creating a thousand disguises you know and you are it you know and it's it's deadly 
I, I really appreciate your vulnerability. I appreciate the work that you're doing. I'm, I'm so inspired by you, pal. I really am. Thank you, man. Thank you. Words mean a lot. And the connection as well, same. It's like a mirror. And we're only getting off this because you're raising our time. We could talk to you for hours. Yeah. And yeah. I, like you, have great respect for what you're doing. Uh, Thanks. What you're doing is my belief. And the more we can integrate this into our community where we suffer the most the uh, the working class the inner city the people who have been forgotten by the government it's up to us to save ourselves and tupac uh, there's a uh, quote in his song it's on us to do what we got to do to survive it's on us to do what we got to do to survive and that for me is turning my pain into my purpose and my mess into my message it's hugely important that people like us who have lived in the flats bring this message back into the flats. Because for me, if somebody rocked up in a suit and tie like 10 years ago, I'm not listening to them. Do you know, I'm not. Now I've got a great deal of respect and I'm more open minded. But 10 years ago or even longer from the flats, I'm not going to hear it from somebody in a suit and a tie and in a in a, a pair of glasses in a hotel telling me how to live my life, you know. So uh, I just want to commend you for bringing the podcast and yourself and your vulnerability to the people at home. Great. Thanks very much. Really appreciate it. One thing you said, it was absolutely fantastic. No one's coming to fucking save you. Save yourself. Rise mm. up. Save, save yourself. No one's mm. going to do it for you. you got to walk the walk. you got to go on the path yourself. You know, beg, borrow, and steal the knowledge from people, but you have to integrate it into your own life and save yourself. Deadly point. I love it. I love it. Darren, Thanks before for we go, me, leave, yeah. me, leave me with your signature. Leave me with your signature. <laughs> I love uh, it. <laughs> Darren, here, founder of Conscious King Coaching. <laughs> Darren, you're a fucking legend. Up the flats, up the liberties. Up the flats. How's your man's a damn working? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll say goodbye to you, brother. Thanks very much. Namaste. Mind your little self. Namaste. Mind your little self. I love that one as well. Thank you. Well, let's get, uh, I'll get a, a, a photograph, a selfie. Can we see you there? One second. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Go up the flat. All the best, right, man? Uh, to your pal. You too, brother. Have a lovely day, all right?